Once upon a time, in the late 60s of the last century, a young girl was breaking down gender barriers when she decided to take physics and algebra classes. She was one of only two girls at her school who decided to go for something that was before a male domain. Her name, Carol Bartz. Today, you may know her as the bold and down-to-earth CEO of Yahoo Inc. The self-made entrepreneur came a long way, struggling with breast cancer and several situations of gender discrimination. When she joined a certain high-tech company in, the, in 1972, she was the only woman professional in a division of 300 men. After repeated acts of gender discrimination and a refused promotion to the headquarters with the words, women don't do this job, she quit. Not because she thought that these words were true, no, just to, be, just to prove otherwise. In the early 90s, she became the CEO of Autodesk, a software design company. During her 14 years reign at Autodesk, she turned this company into a software giant with an annual revenue of $1.5 billion. Success stories like this of female entrepreneurs are rare to find. Although women won ground in a lot of areas, in the Silicon Valleys of our times, they are still rare to find in top positions. In an international study, researchers from DDI found that the further we go on the top of a hierarchy, the less women we find. This graphic shows the proportion of women and men in the different hierarchy levels for sectors with low participation of women. For example, the high-tech sector. Let's make it a bit more concrete and look at some of the Silicon Valley companies. The darling of electronic consumers, Apple. The particip participation of women in the top management, 5%. The biggest sinners are McAfee, Cypress Uniface, and, uh, yeah, Cypress and GDS Uniface. Their participation, 0% of women in the top management. Great. The best performers are Google with 16% and HP with 22%. Now, the big question is, why do we find so few women in the top management of high-tech companies? Three common sense reasons may pop up. First, women are in general no good entrepreneurs. Second, women don't have the specific competences to lead high-tech companies. Third, women are just not interested in high-tech. Let's look at each of these three reasons in more detail. First, women are in general no good entrepreneurs. Okay, this could be at least women tend to have less ambition towards power and risk-taking compared to men. This could mean that they are less good at powerful jobs. But a research by McKinsey just proves the opposite. They uh, found out that companies who have at least 30% of women on board perform better. The employees in those companies are more satisfied concerning work en environment and values, the implementation of the vision, the coordination and control inside the company, and the leadership. Now you may say, okay, come on. These are the soft factors, the soft side. What companies are interested in is this, money. Okay, the same study proves that companies who have women on board perform also better in financial terms. 
they have higher ROEs and higher stock price growth. So what can I tell you? Women do have everything to lead companies to success. They are great entrepreneurs. So I guess common sense reason number one is out. What about common sense reason number two? Women don't have the spe specific competences to lead high-tech companies. What do high-tech companies need? They need to be always up to date. They need to be creative and innovative, and they have to bring the latest discovery to the market before anybody else. In other words, what they need is innovation-intense strategies. In 2008, researchers from the Columbia Business School analyzed the data of the top 1,500 US companies between 1992 and 2006. And what they found were two things. First, they confirmed what we already know. Companies with women on board perform better. Second, they found that this was especially true for companies with innovation-intense strategies. When creativity and collaboration was highly important for the company, they benefited most from the participation of women in the top management. Having said that, I guess common sense reason number two is out. Let's look at common sense reason number three. Women are not interested in high tech. Yeah, could be. I mean, at least we find them most represented in the social sectors, like, for example, healthcare, service, teaching. And the evolutionary theory also delivers the explanation for that. Our genes are still marked by our ancestors from hundreds of thousands of years ago when we were still cavemen. In that time, men would go out for hunting and women would stay at home at the cave with the children, mingling with the other women. So their day-filling program would be of social interaction. So could it be that our genes are still marked by our ancestors and women are just not interested in high-tech because those products don't have so much to do with social interaction? No, this was on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, studies with monkeys seem to prove that there is a genetic determ determined preference. Monkeys are considered to be a good research subject when it comes to the question of uh, genetic influence, because first of all, they are our closest relatives genetically, and secondly, they are not influenced by social norms. So they are unbiased, neutral research subjects. And um, when researchers provided male and female monkeys with different kind of toys, like car toys and plush toys, like dolls, for example, they found that the female monkeys would be more likely to pick up the plush toys and male monkeys would prefer the toy cars. So this study seems to prove that there's a genetic determined preference, right? So males prefer objects with function and women prefer, or females, <laughs> prefer uh, objects that have to do with social interaction. Does this mean now that our common sense reason number three is true? Come on, monkeys. I think there is another factor that we didn't consider yet. That is the absence of role models. The same McKinsey study that I referred to already also found out that 60%, 67% of women consider the absence of female role models a barrier to their careers. And mentorship programs point to the same direction. A mentorship program by the University of British Columbia, they give female undergraduate high-tech students the opportunity 
to spend the summer vacations in a research experience with a female researcher. And the outcome of this study is that 3% of the women that don't participate in this mentorship program continue their studies, compared to 50% of the women who participate in the mentorship program. Similar results are also shown by an initi initiative also in Canada, uh, where they set up classes that purely con consist of females. No, thank you. Why is this always going on again? Okay, never mind. Um, and the results of this initiative are that the participation of the girls in computer classes rises from 10% to 40% when the classes are fully female. And there is another force that might bring a benefit for women, which is Dan Pink, former speechwriter to Al Gore, says that we are at the moment moving from the information age to the conceptual age. And this move could bring a benefit for, for women because he says we, we are moving from an economy that is built on logic, analytical thinking, to an economy that is more based on empathic, creative abilities. To make it more striking, he calls the information age the left brain era and the conceptual age the right brain era. And um, as he, he also says that that's very important, that the abilities that were important in the information age, like analytical uh, thinking and logic thinking, are still necessary in the conceptual age. It's just they are not longer sufficient. What we also need is empathy. So in times that uh, ex expert knowledge becomes downloadable from the internet, it's important that we can empathize with a client, for example, or that we can understand the, sub the subtleties of a nego negotiation. In this sense, we are moving from high tech to high touch. And who knows, maybe this can bring a benefit for women. And ultimately, the future of not only technical women, but of all women. Also, always is a matter of our own attitude and believing in ourselves. And I would say let's learn from a great role model and take it with the spirit of Carol Bartz, who said once, most people assume that because I am a woman, I am standing behind a leader, a man, of course. The fact that they are unenlightened is their problem, not mine.